Hey everyone, thank you so much for tuning in today. So today I want to take a moment to talk about baking. And it's a makeup technique where you are essentially using a setting powder uh, and you're dusting it on and you're letting it set on top of your foundation, your concealer, and the body temperature, your body temperature is gonna warm that up and help it kind of settle, I guess is what I would say. And from that, you're gonna get a really awesome flawless look. So I've already baked um, under my eye on this side in like a V shape, my chin, tip of my nose, bridge of my nose, and kind of in the center there, kind of like in the highlight area. So what I wanna do is teach you how to do the same. Um, it doesn't really take a whole lot of extra time because you can do other things while your face is baking, which is awesome. So today I'm going to show you how to fill in your brows real simple uh, while my face is baking. So um, first things first, um, I just want to let you know that I currently have two foster dogs at my house and I'm hoping that everybody stays quiet while I'm doing the video, but uh, bear with me if they don't. So uh, the first thing that you want to do is hydrate under your eyes. So you wanna make sure that you've applied a moisturizer. What that's gonna do for you is it's gonna help plump your skin, you know, help um, correct any dryness that's under there, and really just make it ideal for applying your foundation, your concealer. Now, I definitely recommend moisturizing your entire face because it also does help control oil, which is something that not a lot of people know. So definitely put a um, moisturizer on at least under your eyes if you're gonna be using that area um, to bake, but definitely uh, on your whole face. It's good for you good for your skin. Okay, so first things first, you're gonna apply concealer. Now what you wanna do if you have a blending bud or um, a, a makeup wedge or beauty blender, they're all the same type of thing, they're all a sponge. What you wanna do is get these wet, um, kinda run them under water, squeeze them, get that wetness all the way through, and then wring them out, and then um, you know, maybe give them a quick squeeze in a towel to kinda, so they're not dripping water. Hey, Daisy, Daisy, come on, hey, come on, good girl, come here. Thing is, if I don't, if I put her away in her kennel, she's going to cry the whole time, and I can't put her outside, because even though I have a fenced in yard, she has found one little spot. Daisy, okay. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna get on some concealer. Now, two things with this concealer. First, you're gonna apply it like you normally would, okay? Then, after you've done that, you actually, if you wanna get kind of brave and try something new, uh, you are going to do a second layer of concealer. Now, bear with me on that. Um, I'm not going to do that today. I didn't do it on this side because I wanted to try it out. Today is the first time I've actually ever tried this technique. Um, so make sure you get it all the way you know, up into the tear duct, really good under the eyes. And um, notice that I am using a dabbing or a pressing motion. That's really just working that concealer into the skin versus uh, you know, like swiping it. Um, you definitely want to use a dabbing motion so you get better coverage. Swiping it is gonna thin it out and your coverage won't be as good. Here's another tip that when you're doing this, notice now I've got a nice clean edge to my eyeshadow. Now what I did on this side was I blended it just a little bit, but this is a nice way to clean up your eyeshadow too. So bonus tip right there. All right, now you would normally go do the other eye, which I've already done, and then um, you could come back and you could even do the other layer of concealer if you wanted. Um, but like I said, we're gonna skip that for today. You know, try it with one layer first, see what, you know, see if you like it, and then go from there. All right, next thing you're gonna do, you need a blending brush. This is an eyeshadow blending brush. It is um, the best blending brush I've ever used. It is awesome. <laughs> and what you're gonna do is you're going to take your translucent setting powder and tap off any excess, and all I want you to do is to do a light dusting. Now, I had never used a translucent setting powder until a few months ago when I started using this, and um, this particular one is almost like a Snapchat filter for your face. I mean, it really blurs everything so, so well that, I mean, I just absolutely love it. Okay, 
So once you just have a thin layer on, what you're gonna do is you're gonna grab another um, blending bud or a sponge, whatever, and what I want you to do is spray it a little bit with a setting spray. Now, the cool thing about setting spray, or at least the kind that I use, you can also use it as a primer, which is pretty cool. So just kind of dab off any extra, you don't want it like soaking wet. Um, and then, what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your setting powder again, and you're gonna dab this into the powder. Now, don't be tapping it off, <laughs> because what you want, and I know it's going to look kind of crazy at first and it's probably going to make you nervous. You want to really pack this on there. And I'm not pushing hard at all. Um, if you push too hard, you're going to find that it's, um, it's pushing in and really like into your skin. And really what you want it to do is just set on top. Doesn't need to be perfect. You know, leave it messy. That's totally fine. All right, and like I said, I've already done my nose, forehead, chin, so I don't need to do any of those areas. Okay, so we're gonna let this set for five to 10 minutes, uh, probably be closer to five, um, cause I'll give you a couple other tips in the meantime while that is setting. Um, next, like I said, I'm going to um, fill in my brows. So a couple little brow tips for you. I've been having them um, shaped for the last few months and I'm really happy with them. Um, they're still kind of growing in a little bit, but um, the first tip, which I already did this today, so it's not gonna show you real well, um, but would be to take the spoolie end or if you have an eyebrow brush and go up like this with it and then take a little pair of nail clippers, or excuse me, nail scissors and cut off any little stray hairs that are particularly long that are outside of the shape of your brow. Because those hairs, when they're laying long, you know, in, you know, like in here with everything else, they throw off the shape a little bit, can make it look a little bit messy. So if you just comb up like that and clip off any stray hairs that are longer than the arch of your brow, um, that can, is one, you know, tip to really help clean them up. Now, another tip for that, even before you do that, would be to fill in your brows. That will help give you cleaner lines, know exactly where you need to be um, trimming. Uh, you don't have to do that, but if you've never done it before and you're nervous, you could fill in just lightly, fill in your brows first to see where that puts you. Um, another tip for filling in your brows is gonna be to go a shade lighter than your brow color if you want a little bit more of a natural look, and then go with your brow color um, if you're wanting a more bold look. I prefer to go with a more natural look. So I go one shade lighter. This is like a medium brown color. And all you're gonna do is do little, little strokes and fill that in right where the shape already is. Um, I've got kind of patchy brows, you know, years of over tweezing and, um, you know, just them not growing in terribly even. So you just use small, small strokes, just like your um, natural hairs to fill that in versus doing like a harsh you know, line. You don't want that. You want it to look soft and natural. Now, like I said, if you do want something a little bit more bold, um, you could even use um, eyebrow shaper, like stencils. Um, you can also do the same shade as your brow to make that a little bit more bold. So I'll just give you guys a nice little close up here. And we'll get in here just a little bit more. Now another tip for you, and this is probably, to be honest, like the biggest thing I'm still working on with reshaping my brows, is the head of your brow, which is the inside basically right here, should be about even with your nostrils. So you can see that mine should be a little bit closer, but you know, years of like over tweezing, um, these little hairs like right in here are having a heck of a time growing. I'm not even kidding you. So, uh, but be patient with it because it can take months for your hairs to start growing in. So filling in your brows is a great way to help you um, still maintain some shape and whatnot while you are letting your brows fill in. So, um, 
We'll be wiping this off here in just a minute, or dusting it off, I should say, in just a minute. And um, so we'll finish this brow out. And if you guys have questions, of course, go ahead and drop them um, in the comments so I can answer them for you. But so this is just a little for anybody hopping on now. I'm just doing a little brow tutorial while I wait for my face to bake, which as you can see is going on right here. And we're just using real small strokes to fill in because you don't want it to be a harsh line. You want it to be soft and natural if you are going, like I said, for a soft natural look. And then that's where you want to do just one shade lighter on your brow color versus actually using your brow color. Um, using your brow color definitely makes it more bold. I tried that for a while. I didn't like it. Like looking back at pictures, it's just it wasn't me. It was too, it was too much. Okay, so brows are good, so let's go ahead and take the next steps. So just a quick recap on what we've done so far. Uh, the first thing is to hydrate wherever you're going to be putting the concealer, but particularly under your eyes. I do suggest moisturizing your entire face. It's good for your skin, uh, but also what moisturizing does is it helps plump up your skin, which helps diminish fine lines and wrinkles, and that's something not a lot of people realize. It also helps control oil, which is awesome. Um, I personally have oily skin, so I definitely moisturize day and night. Uh, let's see. Also, what you're going to do then is you're going to apply your concealer under your eyes. Now, like I said, I've already applied it um, on this half of my face and here, 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 and here. Um, so right now for the tutorial, I'm just kind of demonstrating here. Uh, but when you're working under your eye, you want to go one to two shades lighter of concealer. That's going to help brighten the eye. It's going to also, of course, still conceal, but by applying it in this V shape, you're still going to get more of a natural highlighted look. So it kind of does three things in one, which is really awesome. If you are using concealer anywhere else on your face um, that is not a highlight point, so say like out here or something, make sure you use the same shade of concealer as your foundation uh, because you want that to blend. But if you are using it in an area where you would like highlight for highlighting and contouring, feel free to use that lighter shade anywhere else. So once you apply one coat of concealer, go do the other eye, do a coat of concealer, come back if you want, do another coat of concealer. And through the baking process, I promise you, it's going to look good when it's all finished. It might like, look kind of crazy now, but that's just um, an extra point to pay attention to. So now what we're going to do, um, after you've applied your translucent powder and you did that with a blending bud and you sprayed that with setting spray, right? The next thing that you're going to do is you're going to take that same little brush that you used earlier and you are going to take a pressed powder. Now, the pressed powder color, up to you. You've already done the lighter shade for the concealer, so I would either do your foundation shade or just one shade lighter. I'm working with one shade lighter, um, and that way you still keep that highlighted look, okay? So what you're gonna do, take that little fluffy brush, swirl it around in your pressed powder, and you are just going to work through flaking off that translucent powder, see, and going over with this. So what this does is it gets off the translucent powder, but also helps give you just a little bit more coverage where you applied that concealer. And all you're doing, you're just doing a very light uh, dusting motion. You're not pressing hard. Um, you're just keeping it really, really light. All right, so I just about got it all. I guess I could look at my mirror. A little spot right there. There we go. And that is it. That is how you bake. And then what I did is I went back over it with just um, a slightly different shade just to make it blend more with my skin. And so, so it looks a little different on this side. I thought I felt personally that this was a little too light for me, but I liked it. So I just went back over it with just one shade darker than that, um, and just made that blend a little bit more with my foundation color. So play around with that as far as the foundation color that you use. 
um, to knock off that translucent powder. Play around with that and see what you like best, kind of what flows best for your style and what makeup look you're going for that day. You know, if you want a more dramatic look, that's when you want to rock out those two shades lighter on the concealer, right? Because that's going to give you a more dramatic look versus one shade to be a little bit more of a, a natural look. So, so that is it. That is how you bake. So it's very simple. Um, hope you enjoyed the little bonus eyebrow tutorial as well. I'm going to go and add some blush and uh, call it a day as far as that goes. So I will talk to you soon. If you have questions, let me know, all right? Bye.